Hello everyone, my name is Joe Scorson, channel is called Ethernet Link. In today's video, we are going to be doing some more data structures with a quantitative finance like context to them. Um, I know that for myself, I have to do stuff like this, so that way I actually care about it, right? I wouldn't um, really, wouldn't care too much about trees if um, I didn't have, if I didn't, if I didn't have to, right? But it's really a good thing to know about. Um, it certainly has a lot of use cases, and we're going to go over a few of those today. So what we're going to be doing is we're, we're going to be making a Fenwick tree act as a rolling window. Rolling window would be very useful in quantitative finance um, and really just in a lot of data analysis, right? So it doesn't have to be just for quant finance. So we're going to hop right into that. We're going to do it in Python. We're going to do it asynchronously because I know that you guys love Python. Um, so I'm just going to give you what you want. I'm not going to fight it. But um, yeah, we're going to hop right into that. Before that, I want to show you guys my business Twitter. And I got some good news for you guys. If you guys can see this right here. We have a discount code for my indicator with Luxalgo, SEE-BLK-40, BLK, you know, Black Friday, SEE, Scores on Enterprises, 40, 40% off. This will be active until Saturday, um, November 30th, right? So then if you head on over to Luxalgo's website right here, you guys can read up on it a little bit more, and then you guys could actually get access to it. There are also videos on my YouTube channel about backtesting it and just more information on it. So yeah, and one last thing about this, and then I promise we're gonna get into the code. If you like this video and are subscribed to me, and you comment on this video, I'll choose three people from the comments to give this indicator to for 60% off. So if you'd want that, um, yeah, comment on the video. And then on Saturday, Saturday morning, so that way like everybody, it expires for everybody at the same time, but I'll give you that discount code, and then we could get into it. So. Let's hop into some code now. That's me. I want to go there. There we go. So yeah, we're gonna do. We're gonna make a Fenwick tree as a rolling window. And so let's hop right into it. Um, I am gonna have a reference open in case you guys see me look over there, just to make sure that I'm coding this all correctly from uh, for you guys. I think that while I finish up this initialize function, I want to talk about something really quickly, and then I'll go through and explain it. Um, I think that being able to do, I don't want to say being able to do, but I think that doing things entirely from memory just for the sake of it, and I think that doing things like lead code problems and stuff like that, man, I don't really think it makes you a better developer or a better engineer. I really don't. I really don't. I think that it tests how much free time you have really well. I think that it tests um, basics super, super well. You should know a lot of basics, but I don't think that, I don't think that it should be like the end all be all. And if you get a position or if you feel good about yourself as a developer, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that, um, that's a little crazy. I'm going to explain this before I get into this while loop. So we have, we're just going to get some, uh, some self variables for this object. We're going to say stuff that size is size. The tree, we're going to initialize all these to zeros, but the tree is at one based index. So that's why we're going to add one to this. The window is going to be at zero based indexing, and then we're going to get the current size like that. So yeah, we're going to need, excuse me, we're going to need two um, helper functions, two functions that are going to get called by the things that the people are going to call, are going to call right? So we got uptrade, update tree. We need an index and a delta because we're going to need a delta because Fenwick trees preserve data very well. It's like one of their strengths, really. It's like not something you want to fight with them. So we're gonna um, we're gonna actually use that. We're not gonna fight that at all. I'm not gonna fight you guys by just coding everything in Go, and I'm not gonna fight uh, Fenwick trees by not using a delta right that. So that is how we are going to update values by using a delta and then adding it to um, adding it to the index. And then you're gonna notice that I'm using an ampersand right there. And then a negative index as well. This is because, well, the ampersand is a bitwise and operator in Python. So I'm using it like this. So that way we actually shift the index over correctly. So that way we don't just go down a list. It's not a list. It's a tree, right? We're using it as a list, but it's a tree rather than a list. So that's why we need to do this like that. And also we need to query the tree. We're going to use this in a... Um, uh, what context are we going to use it? But we're going to use this in a sum, in a, in a sum context, a summation context. So we're going to initialize the total to zero. I'm going to loop through it again. So while index is less than, 
are equal to self dot size. We're going to say that our total is plus equal self dot uh, tree at index. And actually, we're not going to do it like that. We're going to loop it the other way. So we're going to say self dot index is greater than zero. We're going to loop it the other way. I suppose you could do this either way, but because I'm using this as a rolling window, I think that this makes a little bit more sense. And then, um, so that way, yes, it does make a lot more sense. So contextually later, you guys will be able to understand why we do it like this and how easy it was for me to make that little mistake. And then it's going to return this total. So yeah, sweet. So now we can actually get into the real, um, the real methods that people are going to use. So we're going to have an update method. DF update. And what we're going to use, we're going to use a self and a value. And we are going to get, uh, we're going to get a few indexes right here. So we're going to get a rolling index for our rolling window to make sure that we put things in the right spot and that we keep it at the current, at the correct size. So we're going to say self that current index modulo our size, size, there we go. And then we're going to get a uh, tree index. Well, I'm going to call it a Fenwick index. And it's just going to be the rolling index plus one, just because the Fenwick indexes are um, one based, not zero based. And now we need to get that delta value like we were talking about before. So the old value is going to be whatever is in the rolling window, self that window at that um, window index, our rolling index, mod on. And then, oh, I don't know what I just did right there. I think I just made a new terminal by accident. And then we're going to say, yeah, I really don't know what I just did right there, <laughs> but whatever, I'm just going to delete that. And then, right, now with this delta, we're going to get the value that was passed in and subtract it, or subtract the old value from it, so that way we know how much to update it with, right? Because these things preserve data. And then we're going to call self dot, um, update tree. And then we're going to give it the Fenwick index and the, the not the not finally Fenwick index and the delta. There we go. And we're going to set our windows rolling. We'll set the value at our windows rolling index to the value, and then uh, self dot current index plus equals one. There we go. Now let's do our query. So that way we can get things at specific um, indexes, if we so please, efficiently as well. That's kind of a, that's a big point about using a tree rather than just a straight up list. It will be just a quicker lookup. So we're going to say if our index is less than zero or index, I know I forgot the F, <laughs> is greater than the self dot size. I'm going to put that if in there right now. And then, so if that's true, I'm just going to return a string, but in like an actual practice, um, might want to handle that a bit more gracefully. So there we go. And then if we can actually go through, what we're going to do is we're just going to return whatever value is in that index at the tree. Important that we use the tree because that is one base index. So that way when we say one, this actually does mean the first index. So now we're going to do a sum because that's part of the Another, another thing that are just great about Fenwick trees. And what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to say index gets none initially. And I'm going to say if index is none, if that is like the same, then I'm just going to, I'm just going to return. Yeah, I'm just going to return await self.query tree. And the index will be um, self.size. So that way we do the whole thing. If it's not none, we're going to do this same, we're going to call the same function, but we're going to do it up to the index. And we'll see what that looks like once we finish this uh, whole body. And then a two string, just because it makes life awesome. And the person return an F string. So we say window and then self dot window. Beautiful. There we go. That is our that's our um, object for our async Fenwick rolling window. Could probably call it something better, but 
whatever. <laughs> so in a main function now, we have our window size to five. We're going to make our Fenwick tree, right? We're going to initialize it right there. I'm just going to have these values. And instead of just doing a million lines, I'm just going to put a for loop in there. And so we're going to say for every value, we're going to await Fenwick tree dot update. We're going to update it with the value. And then do a little print line so that we can actually see what we just did. Do an F string added value current window. And then we're just going to current window sum. So I want to do first and I'm going to await uh, Fender tree dot sum. Make sure you put the parentheses and then I'm going to two string it right here because we have window prefixed in there. Right, so then we could just, I don't need the await, so I'm just going to get rid of that. And then two string. Oh, did I misspell it? Yeah, I forgot a G. <laughs> two string. There we go. Now I'm going to let all that happen. And then we're going to see how it looks like to query, right? So I'm going to print uh, query index three. And then we're going to await. Uh, and then we're just going to do three. I'm not going to set it to a variable. And then we're going to print. I just forgot how to type real quick. Uh, we're going to do sum to index two is what I want to do. And so we're going to await uh, Fenwick dot sum <laughs> dot sum. And then I'm going to set it to two, right? Because we don't have to set it to anything, but we can set it to two. So we're going to see how that looks. I'm just going to make this huge for you guys. Call main, and there we go. We can see that it's all initialized to have five zeros in there. So we're going to add 10, at 20, at 30, at 40, at 50, and it re replaces values. It doesn't. It won't like. It won't like nudge them over. Right. So we fill up the list right here, and it knocks off the 10, knocks off the 20, and then it would keep on going. Right. So if we query index three, we can see that we have 30 right there. And the sum to index two might not be the best way to say that. No, it is. Yeah, because I did the math wrong in my head right there. So we have a um, sum that sum to index two is one thirty. So sixty plus seventy is one hundred thirty. Right, and so now it could be pretty cool if we want to get a quick moving average, right? So of the rolling window, like that would be the whole point of it. Um, we could just say. We're just going to say Fenwick tree dot sum for the whole thing over uh, Fenwick tree dot size print. Now this won't really make much sense at all because no stock moves like that. But oh, oh, I gotta await them, right? It's like the whole point <laughs> is to. Uh, use async and actually handle it correctly. There we go. Our moving average would be 50. Sweet. And now oh, I'm just going to quickly do it in my head. 70, 70, 140, 250 over 5 is 50. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that is how to do that in Python right there. Um, just some really quick, really efficient calculations and data storing. Um, I'm, a, I'm such a nerd from this. I'm such a sucker for this stuff. I just think it's really cool. I think that doing things in a tree like that, like right here, we got some bitwise going on. I think like you could see the fundamentals coming back. It's just, it's so useful. I think it's so neat. I think that doing it all with async just makes a good thing even better. And so, yeah, you could just make some really efficient, really, really cool stuff with this. Um, so yeah, that's what I got for you guys today. Uh, before you guys forget, make sure that you comment something. So that way, make sure that you comment, subscribe to the channel and, um, like this video so that way you guys could get a chance to get 60% off rather than 40. Follow my Twitter account. You would have gotten that news as soon as, as soon as anything. You would have gotten it before anybody today. And um, I started to record the Advent of Code videos. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek. Why not? Why not, right? I, um, I wrote down a roadmap of it all. So I'm going to grab that, put that over here. So we have 25 videos here. So we're going to use Wi-Fi to get data and plot it. 
display some indicators on that chart, display different kinds of volatility, explain the Black-Scholes model, binomial, Monte Carlo simulation to price options, talk about IV, plot of volatility service, async cash. We're going to do that one. I love that one. I'm a nerd for it. Make a simple backtesting framework in Python. Uh, example order book, multiple order book types, more advanced strategy. Haven't decided what I'm going to do that, yet, that one yet. Second advanced strategy, aka filler video. <laughs> um, portfolio metrics like sharp ratios, uh, value at risk, stuff like that. Stress test the portfolio. I think that one will be fun. Start machine learning with k-means. What stocks are driving Dow 30 returns? I think that's so fun. Again, nerd for that. PCA and the yield curve, what bond yields, what year bonds are driving the yield curve the most. Risk parity, support met vector machines for outliers, time series decomposition, markup change, which I don't like, but useful. Neural networks, LSTMs, which I don't like, but could be useful. Deep reinforcement learning, which I think is a waste of time, but could be useful. And NLP for sentiment, which I think is kind of cool. Um, yeah, though, that's all I got for you guys today. Hope that you guys have a great one. Hope you guys are excited for those Advent of Code ones. I started recording the first three videos. So if you watch the old, uh, watch the first three ones and you think to yourself, does this guy only have one outfit? I just recorded all three of them back to back. But also, I hope, I hope that you guys got some power. I got mine in the 11th, so I'm pretty happy. But yeah, you guys have a great day. I'm going to finish this coffee. And yeah, have a good one. I'll see you in the next.